Hey there, welcome back to our channel. We're here to dive into the fascinating accounts of individuals who've experienced near-death moments and other spiritual adventures. Today we're going to hear from Samuel Harrington, who claims to have had a profound experience when he passed away, meeting Jesus along the way. He discovered something surprising. Jesus isn't quite how the church often portrays him. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit that button. And don't forget to drop your name and city in the comments. Now let's listen to Samuel's incredible story. Hello, my name is Samuel Harrington, and my life was turned upside down by an experience I'm eager to share. Let's rewind a bit to who I was before this all happened. Honestly, I was just an average guy, pretty much invisible in a crowd, I'd say. Born and raised in the laid-back town of Boulder, Colorado, I always appreciated the peace that came with a simple, predictable lifestyle. For years, I held a position as a supervisor in the probation department of a juvenile court. It was tough work, but I found fulfillment in the idea that I was positively impacting young lives. Together with my wife, Lily, we led a modest life surrounded by friends, our cozy home, and of course, our church. Faith was a significant aspect of our lives. I grew up in a traditional Christian family and kept those beliefs close to my heart throughout adulthood. Our daily routine was straightforward. We'd wake up early, share breakfast, head off to work, return home for dinner, catch a bit of TV, and then retire for the night. Sundays were dedicated to church. It was comfortable and predictable, a life without unexpected twists, which suited me just fine. I wasn't much of a thinker. I took what I learned at church at face value, adhered to societal norms, and threw myself into my work. Big philosophical questions weren't on my radar. Life was simple and I was content living it that way. But then came May 2006. It started out like any other day. The sun was bright, birds were chirping, and I was gearing up for work. Little did I know that just a few short hours later, everything would change dramatically. I never imagined I would face something that would shatter everything I thought I knew about life, death, and what lies beyond. But that day in May turned my understanding upside down. It compelled me to reconsider my entire existence and altered how I viewed the world, my beliefs, and my purpose. I want to unfold this story for you, a tale of death and rebirth, filled with insights and transformation. It was a journey that pushed me beyond my perceived limits and returned me with a richer comprehension of what it really means to live fully. So, let's dive in together. You might find that this challenges some of your own ideas, but I urge you to keep an open heart. Trust me, the reality we live in is far broader and more incredible than we typically imagine. It all began with an intense pain, a jabbing force that suddenly seized the left side of my body like a bolt from the blue. At first, I brushed it off, thinking it was a fleeting issue. I had battled kidney stones before, and this felt somewhat familiar. Yet with each passing moment, the pain escalated, becoming nearly unbearable. My wife, Lily, sensed that something was off the moment she laid eyes on me. She knows me too well to be misled by my efforts to downplay my discomfort. Samuel, she said gently but firmly, we need to get to the hospital. I hesitated, as I often do in these situations, but with the pain turning excruciating, I reluctantly agreed. Driving to the hospital felt like it took forever. Each bump jolted me painfully, and I gripped the seat with such intensity that my knuckles whitened. I tried focusing on my breathing, recalling techniques I had learned before. Meanwhile, Lily hurriedly navigated the road while casting worried glances in my direction every few moments. Upon arriving at the emergency room, I was whisked away for immediate attention. The medical staff bombarded me with questions and conducted examinations. Deep down, I was bracing myself for the familiar verdict, another kidney stone. Even though I knew what was coming, hearing that I would need surgery to remove it stirred a flutter of anxiety in my stomach. As I was prepped for the procedure, I locked eyes with Lily. She held my hand tightly, her gaze a mixture of concern, love, and unwavering support. It's going to be okay, she reassured me, forcing a smile that was both comforting and encouraging. I was trying to look confident, even though my stomach was in knots. As the anesthesia kicked in, an unsettling feeling washed over me. It felt like a part of me was aware that something amazing was about to unfold. I dismissed it as typical pre-surgery jitters, 
but the sensation lingered, a strange shiver at my spine that seemed unrelated to the drugs. The last images I recall before slipping away are bright lights overhead and the faint sounds of doctors and nurses chattering, with Lily's face fading as the doors swung shut. And then just like that, it was all darkness. Little did I know then, but this moment marked the beginning of the most remarkable journey of my life. One that would push the boundaries of everything I thought I understood about existence, mortality, and the mysteries beyond. What unfolded next is a tale that still stirs my thoughts years later, and though it's challenging to articulate, I feel compelled to share it. It's a narrative that could shift perspectives about our world and our role in it. Post-surgery, I was told everything went smoothly. The doctors successfully removed the stone, and ordinarily, I should have awoken a few hours later, feeling a mix of soreness and relief. But fate had a different script for me. While I remained unconscious, my body was waging a quiet, brutal war. The antibiotic meant to stave off infection failed miserably, and soon an infection was rapidly taking hold, transforming what was supposed to be a straightforward procedure into a desperate struggle for survival. Of course, I was oblivious to the chaos around me. I was deeply submerged in the anesthesia's grasp. But Lily, who was by my side, witnessed everything unfold. She recounted later how my complexion turned pale and my skin clammy, my breathing shallow and erratic. Doctors and nurses began moving in and out of my room more frequently, their expressions tense with concern. It was Lily who sensed that something was terribly amiss. She described an eerie shift in the atmosphere, as if darkness had cast a shadow over the room. Realizing the urgency, she called a nurse who quickly grasped the gravity of the situation. Within moments, the room was swarming with medical personnel and an array of equipment all mobilizing to address the crisis at hand. Chaos enveloped the room as everyone rushed to save me. An infection had taken over, pushing my body into septic shock, a severe condition causing a dangerous drop in blood pressure. One after another, my organs began to shut down, unable to receive the essential blood and oxygen they so desperately needed. Later, Lily would share how heartbreaking it was to hear that heart monitor shift from its steady beeping to a piercing, relentless tone. At that moment, I was clinically dead. The medical team instantly jumped into action, resuscitation efforts kicking off with chest compressions, electric shocks, and adrenaline injections. They pulled out all the stops to bring me back. Lily stood there, watching in sheer disbelief grappling with how a situation that seemed so routine spiraled into such a crisis. Meanwhile, I was completely unaware of the commotion. My consciousness had shifted somewhere else, far from my physical form and the whirlwind unfolding in the hospital room. Instead, I was beginning a journey that would completely reshape how I viewed life and death. At exactly 3.15 in the afternoon, I was pronounced clinically dead. Ironically, what should have been the end of my story was the doorway to something remarkable, something that would forever alter my understanding of existence and my role within it. What unfolded next is still difficult for me to articulate. Honestly, it feels like mere words fall short of capturing the enormity of the experience. I'll do my best to describe those moments that followed my clinical death. Get ready, because what I'm about to recount might challenge everything you believe about what lies beyond. When I was pronounced clinically dead, it ignited an experience beyond earthly explanation. Just like that, I found myself hovering above my body. It felt surreal, watching the scene like a movie, except the figure on the bed was indisputably me. I saw the doctors and nurses rushing around, their voices distant and muffled, as if they were echoing from another world. Then there was Lily, my loving wife, anguish etched on her face as she held my lifeless hand. I longed to reach out, to reassure her that everything was all right, but I realized I had no voice, no physical form to comfort her with. To be honest, what happened next was nothing short of surreal. As I hung there, watching the chaotic scene unfold below me, an unusual sense of tranquility enveloped me. It was a profound peace that I had never encountered before. Somehow, all my anxieties and fears felt like they just evaporated into thin air. Out of nowhere, I found myself shifting. This wasn't your typical movement. Rather, it felt more like I was instantly transported somewhere else. 
I drifted through the ceiling of the hospital as if it were made of mist, zooming through the floors in a blurred rush. Before I knew it, I was floating above the city, watching Boulder fade beneath me. The landscape morphed, the mountains and sprawling greens shrinking into a vibrant patchwork beneath my gaze. As I soared higher, the bright blue sky transitioned into the profound darkness of space, where stars twinkled with a clarity I had never seen from the ground. Then I spotted it, a light unlike anything I had ever witnessed. It wasn't overwhelming, but radiated warmth and a sense of welcome that beckoned me closer. I felt an undeniable pull, like this was the destination I was always meant to reach. As I approached, there were sounds that began to fill the air. They were not quite melodies, but rather ethereal harmonies that resonated within me, almost as if the universe itself was serenading me. In a heartbeat, I passed through that radiant light. It felt as if I'd stepped through a veil of pure energy. What awaited me on the other side was simply breathtaking. The hues I encountered were brighter than anything Earth offered. There were colors I didn't even know existed. Picture expansive green fields stretching endlessly, punctuated by towering trees with leaves shimmering with their own luminescence. Sparkling rivers wound gracefully through this paradise, their waters so clear that they resembled flowing diamonds. The air, if I can even call it that, was infused with an intoxicating sweetness, a delightful blend of fresh blooms and an indescribable essence that instantly made me feel at home. But the most astonishing aspect of it all was the overwhelming presence of pure, unconditional love that seemed to saturate everything in this extraordinary place. It felt like the very atmosphere was vibrant and full of life, wrapping around me like a warm embrace. In that instant, I realized beyond any shadow of a doubt that I had uncovered a form of paradise, not just the kind I had pictured in books or conjured in prayers, but a living, breathing heaven, overflowing with beauty that surpassed my wildest dreams. And this was only the beginning of my adventure. As I soaked in the breathtaking scenery enveloping me, something truly remarkable caught my attention. It was as if everything was imbued with consciousness. The trees stood tall, not merely as plants, but as sentient entities radiating warmth and invitation. Flowers seemed to turn their blossoms in my direction, greeting me with a gentle nod. Even the ground underneath me, if I even had feet in that surreal moment, seemed to thrum with life and energy. I began to glide through this wondrous realm, each movement revealing marvels I'd never anticipated. Up high, waterfalls of luminescent light cascaded upwards, their shimmering waters producing melodies that danced joyfully over the rocks. Fields of flowers greeted me with changing hues, creating a swirling tapestry of colors that dazzled my senses. Above me, constellations twinkled and spun, forming elaborate shapes as if they were narrating tales from the cosmos. At times, what felt like comets of love streaked across the sky, leaving behind trails of golden brilliance that filled me with pure, unexplainable happiness. The most astonishing realization dawned on me. I could navigate this place simply by thinking. Want to be atop a distant peak? One blink and I was there, yearning to plunge into a sea of light. A mere wish transported me to an underwater realm filled with radiant beings I had never encountered on Earth. Yet, what truly amazed me was the profound connection I felt with everything surrounding me. There was no divide between my essence and the breathtaking environment. Somehow, every particle of my being resonated in perfect synchronization with this heavenly domain. Waves of love and joy poured out from all corners, and I became aware that this warmth also flowed from within me. Eventually, I paused by a shimmering lake, the water astonishingly clear, reflecting not only the azure sky above, but also hinting at entire galaxies shimmering beneath its surface. When I glanced down at my reflection, a wave of disbelief washed over me. Staring back was not the familiar face of Samuel, a 53-year-old man with gray hair and features marked by the weight of worry. As I stared at what felt like my true self, a vibrant and youthful version emerged, radiating wisdom and peace simultaneously. It dawned on me that I was witnessing my essence, unbound by the limits of time and the physical world. While I was absorbed in this reflection, a warm presence began to near. It wasn't a typical physical arrival like I'd know back in Boulder. Instead, it was an overwhelming sense of love and welcome that enveloped everything.
My consciousness shifted, and that's when I first encountered him on this extraordinary journey, Jesus. Unlike the familiar images of him from paintings or stained glass, he appeared as pure light, love made manifest. His presence was strong yet tender, instantly making me feel at home. When his deep, warm eyes locked onto mine, they felt like windows to the universe, seeing right into my soul. Welcome, Samuel. He spoke with a resonance that bypassed ordinary words, diving straight into my essence. In that moment, it became clear that my heavenly adventure was just beginning, and deeper insights were on the horizon. As I wandered through this paradise, completely in awe of my surroundings, that same feeling of approach washed over me again. It was a rare mixture of wonder, unconditional love, and a sense of familiarity that I couldn't quite explain. I instinctively understood that someone significant was drawing near. The trees ahead gracefully parted, creating a path for me, and there he was, Jesus Christ. But he wasn't the figure from those Renaissance masterpieces I'd seen. This was a glowing being, radiating a soft light that seemed to caress all it touched. The compassion and understanding in his eyes appeared boundless. When he gazed at me, it was as if my entire life story unfolded at that moment, with no judgment, only acceptance and love. Overcome with emotion, I found myself kneeling not out of fear, but simply because I was so moved. Tears streamed down my face, if I could even call them tears in that divine state. It felt like all the burdens of my sins, doubts, and fears from earth were being washed away, leaving behind an incredible feeling of lightness I'd never known. Then Jesus approached with a gentle smile that illuminated his entire being. He reached out his hand, and in that moment, I felt uplifted, embraced by his warmth. The moment his hand touched me, a surge of pure, radiant love filled my entire being, like an electric charge that brought me to life. Hey there, Samuel, he greeted, his voice echoing not just in my ears, but resonating through every part of me. You've made quite the trek to arrive here. I was at a loss for words, how could one respond to someone so profound, the Son of God? But in that sacred space, I realized words weren't necessary. Our thoughts, feelings, and memories flowed effortlessly between us, a silent exchange that required no verbal language. As he started moving, he turned to me, inviting me to walk alongside him. The sound of his voice wrapped around me like a warm melody, rich with insight and clarity. Samuel, he began, I can sense there are many questions on your mind about life, your faith, the meaning behind it all. I know that much of what you observe challenges your previous understanding. I could only nod, overwhelmed by a swirl of wonder and confusion. The reality, Samuel, is both simpler and deeper than what many hold as true on earth, he continued. Love, boundless, unconditional love, is what everything revolves around. It's the very fabric that weaves together all existence. As he spoke, I felt illusions fading away replaced by profound truths about reality, existence, and the deep connection among all beings. Jesus explained, Many teachings you encountered during your time on earth come from human interpretations, often skewed by limited perspectives or personal motives. My core message is always centered on love, compassion, and unity, not on judgment, division, or fear. His words struck a chord within me. How often had I seen others through a lens of rigid interpretations of texts, how frequently had I let fear dictate my choices instead of love? Sensing the weight of my reflections, he gently placed his hand on my shoulder. Don't be hard on yourself, Samuel. Every journey unfolds uniquely, and each soul learns and evolves at its own pace. What truly matters is that you're here now, witnessing and experiencing the essence of truth firsthand. At that instant, a wave of gratitude swept over me, so powerful that I thought I might burst with it. I felt this immense thankfulness for this moment, this clarity, and the unconditional love that now revealed itself as the universe's true essence. His smile radiated warmth, a smile imbued with the wisdom and love of the cosmos. There's still so much more for you to explore and understand, Samuel. Are you ready to continue this adventure together? Without a second thought, I agreed. Little did I realize that what followed would completely reshape my understanding. As we strolled together, Jesus started to unveil truths that turned my previous beliefs about faith, reality, and our existence upside down. His voice was gentle, and yet each word resonated with profound significance. Samuel, he said, many of the ideas you and your peers hold about me 
the afterlife and spiritual existence are oversimplified. The actual truth is much grander and more beautiful than what the human mind can truly fathom. He took a moment, giving me space to reflect. Then he went on, The perception many have of me as a stern judge, just waiting to pass sentence, is quite misleading. My true nature, representative of all that is divine, is unconditional love. Not the kind that comes with stipulations, like what you often find on earth, but a love that nurtures and accepts every soul, no matter their actions or beliefs. These insights struck a chord within me. I couldn't help but think of all those times I had feared divine retribution. How many times had I thought I was serving a higher purpose when I judged others? Noticing my inner turmoil, Jesus offered me a warm smile. The fear of judgment you experience in life is actually a mirage. When souls leave the physical realm, they undergo a period of reflection. It's then that you see your life in light of universal love, grasping the real impact of your actions and decisions. His tone was filled with kindness as he continued. While many religions on earth have noble intentions, they often misrepresent this core truth. They establish rigid rules, rituals, and hierarchies that tend to draw people away from connecting with the divine instead of bringing them closer. His words left me feeling a mix of disbelief and relief. I had spent my whole life adhering to my church's teachings, convinced that it was the singular route to salvation. Now, here was Jesus suggesting that the reality was much more inviting and expansive. Genuine spirituality, he clarified, isn't about following strict regulations or associating with one religious identity. It's about embodying love, compassion, and empathy. It's about recognizing the divine spark within yourself and in everyone else. It's about understanding that we are all threads woven into a larger fabric of universal consciousness. As he spoke, it was as if layers of misunderstanding were being lifted from my eyes. A fresh perspective on existence began to unfold before me. As I stood there, everything around me came into focus. A vast web where every individual, every living being, and even the tiniest particles interacted through shimmering connections of light and love. It was astonishing to recognize how our thoughts and actions created waves in this intricate fabric, influencing everything within our reach. The essence of existence, Jesus explained, isn't about striving for a spot in paradise or evading consequences. It's about growth and learning, about expanding our consciousness. Each life and every encounter offers a chance for the soul to develop and grasp the essential oneness of all that is. His words struck me deeply. They felt both freeing and completely overwhelming. It was as if everything I believed was undergoing a radical transformation right in front of me. Yet strangely, I did not feel afraid or resistant. Instead, there was an undeniable sense that I was inching closer to the truth. Picking up on my feelings, Jesus placed his hand on my shoulder. His touch radiated warmth and understanding, filling me with comfort. I understand this is a lot to process, Samuel. Remember, your presence here isn't by coincidence. The path you've walked on earth, with its hardships and joyful moments, has all led you to this enlightening experience. Looking into his eyes, which seemed to hold the wisdom of the cosmos, I found myself asking the burning question on my mind. What should I do with all of this knowledge when I go back? His gentle smile contrasted with the intensity sparkling in his gaze. Spread the love, Samuel. Live the truth you've come to know here. Instead of teaching rigid doctrines, let your actions exemplify the clarity of unconditional love and the interconnectedness of all creation. In that instant, a sense of purpose washed over me, a clarity I had never known. If I returned to my life, everything would be transformed, and this journey of revelations was just beginning. After sharing these profound insights, Jesus invited me to discover further realms of the heavenly kingdom. There's so much more waiting for you, he said, beaming with warmth. Every soul experiences this realm differently, influenced by their unique life stories and perceptions. Embrace it all openly, without judgment or expectation. With that, Jesus faded away, not abruptly, but as if he had seamlessly blended into the surroundings. And in that moment, I recognized that my adventure was far from over. Even in the absence of his physical form, I was struck by how profoundly his presence resonated within everything around me. This led me on an exciting journey through a breathtaking celestial landscape. 
The first thing that caught my attention was how the atmosphere appeared to mirror my inner state. When I focused on thoughts of peace and tranquility, I found myself in an incredibly serene garden. The flowers danced with colors so vivid, I had never encountered their like on earth. Their scent was something else entirely, a wonderful blend that brought both calm and vitality. Then, when I envisioned grandeur and majesty, the scene abruptly shifted. I was suddenly standing atop a stunning mountain, gazing down at a valley that seemed to stretch infinitely. The surrounding peaks rippled slightly, resembling waves in a cosmic sea. Above me, the sky was alive with a whirl of colors, and magnificent auroras twirled in captivating patterns. There was a moment when I truly felt one with the natural world around me. Trees, rocks, and even the very air seemed to possess a consciousness. I discovered that I could connect with them, not through spoken words, but through an exchange of feelings and impressions, an understanding beyond language. It felt as though our essences intertwined. I was part of everything, and everything was a part of me. As I wandered through this extraordinary place, I came across other souls. Some were immediately recognizable, my loved ones who had passed on. There were my grandparents, who looked youthful and radiant, beaming with warm smiles. Friends I had lost along the way also appeared, all embodying the best versions of themselves. The joy of reconnecting with them was overwhelming. We didn't need to chat or fill in the gaps. In an instant, we exchanged everything, our experiences, emotions, and personal journeys. It was a seamless communication, unbound by earthly limitations. Among those I encountered was my uncle, Samuel Harrington, who had always inspired me during my time on Earth. With a gentle smile, he conveyed a message without uttering a word. Be sure to care for your family, Samuel. The love we share here should find its way into our actions back on Earth. Aside from familiar faces, I also came across beings that seemed to transcend human understanding. They appeared as pure light, radiating wisdom and compassion. While I couldn't entirely grasp their essence, I felt undeniably drawn to their presence, enveloped in warmth and understanding. In a stunning celestial reality, I found myself journeying through a realm beyond comprehension. One of the ethereal beings approached me, and our connection transcended spoken language. Instead, I was met with a cascade of vivid visions, revealing the universe's intricate tapestry. Galaxies forming and collapsing, stars dancing with planets, and the profound link connecting everything, from minuscule atoms to massive supernovas. This experience humbled me while simultaneously showcasing the magnificence of creation itself. Interestingly enough, my perception of time transformed completely. There was no concept of day or night. I existed solely in an endless moment, brimming with marvels and discoveries. Joy and serenity enveloped me in ways I had never known before. Yet, amidst this overwhelming beauty, a faint apprehension started to arise within me. An instinct told me that this heavenly visit wouldn't last forever that more awaited me on earth. At that moment, I sensed Jesus returning, and I knew another significant revelation was imminent. As I reveled in the splendor surrounding me, feeling an unprecedented sense of belonging, Jesus appeared beside me again. His expression was calm, but with an intensity in his eyes that warned me of the gravity of what was coming next. Samuel, he spoke gently, you've had just a taste of eternity, but your life on earth is far from over. My heart, if you could call it that in such a state, plummeted at his words. The mere thought of departing from this sanctuary of love and tranquility filled me with a profound sorrow I could hardly bear. Seeing my distress, Jesus placed a comforting hand on my shoulder. His touch radiated a soothing wave of understanding that swept through me. I feel your hesitation, Samuel, he said, his tone laced with empathy. This place is indeed extraordinary, and one day you will return for good. But right now, your journey on Earth holds significant purpose. I gazed at him, a swirl of confusion and trepidation flooding my senses. A purpose? I inquired, my voice tinged with uncertainty. With a smile as bright as dawn, Jesus affirmed, Absolutely, Samuel. What you've witnessed here is remarkable. You've grasped truths that many on Earth have yet to discover. You have experienced the boundless love that forms the core of creation itself. Now it's time for you to share some of that understanding. The atmosphere around me shifted as I listened, a sense of purpose igniting inside. 
Each part of me began to align with a newfound clarity about where I fit into this vast universe. But how am I supposed to do that? I asked, a mix of awe and fear coursing through me. How can I convey such an immense truth to those who have never known it? With a twinkle in his eyes, Jesus replied, You'll share it through love, Samuel, through kindness, through the way you live your life. There's no need for preaching or trying to convert anyone. Just embody the truths you've discovered here. Lead by example and show others the strength of unconditional love and the interconnectedness of all beings. As his wisdom sank in, I felt a rush of clarity. It dawned on me that the goal wasn't to argue about heaven or dive into complex theology. It was about embodying the profound truth I had seen, that we are all woven together by a divine love. Remember, Samuel, he added, each act of kindness, every moment spent showing compassion, all genuine expressions of love are glimpses into the heavenly realm. You can help bring a piece of that paradise to earth through your actions. I felt a new resolve building within me. Sure, I'd miss this serene and loving space, but I was now equipped with a purpose that infused my earthly life with significance. I'm ready, I declared, surprised by the strength in my voice. Jesus smiled at me, radiating an affection that felt boundless. I know you are, Samuel, and keep in mind, even when you go back, you'll never truly be alone. This place and I will always be with you, in every heartbeat, every breath, every loving gesture. With that, he reached out his hand, and when I connected with it, an intense current of energy coursed through me. The celestial realm around us began to dissolve, swirling into a spectrum of light. Just before I felt myself being drawn back, I heard Jesus' voice resonating across the dimensions. Carry love with you, Samuel. Carry peace. And never forget what you have experienced here. And just like that, the next moment, the sky vanished. I was plummeting, falling back into the world I once knew. But I was returning with a renewed sense of purpose. It felt like a whirlwind, this sudden return to my physical existence. One moment, I was soaring in a realm filled with ethereal light and unconditional love. The next, I was jolted back into my fragile state, lying in a hospital bed. The first sensation that struck me was a penetrating pain, sharp and pulsating, echoing through every part of my being. Along with it came the relentless beeping of machines and the distant murmur of conversations happening around me. With great effort, I managed to pry my eyes open. Oh, that fluorescent light. It was so stark and unyielding compared to the gentle luminosity I had just experienced. I blinked repeatedly gradually making sense of the blurry figures nearby. And there she was, Lily, my wife. Her face, streaked with tears, showed a mix of disbelief and relief that couldn't be mistaken. Samuel, her voice quivered as she spoke, filled with raw emotion. Oh my God, Samuel, you're back! I wanted to respond, but my throat felt like sandpaper. Just then, a nurse appeared with a glass of water and a straw. Even that simple sip was a struggle but it was soothing and brought a bit of comfort amidst the chaos. As days turned into a blur, I learned more about the ordeal. Apparently, I had been gone for nearly 20 minutes. Doctors had already been preparing to declare me dead when, miraculously, my heart resumed beating. They called it a medical miracle, but deep down, I understood it was something far more significant. Recovery was no picnic. My body had taken quite the beating, and healing would be a gradual process. Yet, what truly amazed me was the inner transformation happening within. From the moment I opened my eyes again, I realized I would never see the world the same way. My glimpse of heaven altered everything. My view on reality, my grasp of life's purpose, and my bond with something greater than myself. Lily was the first to pick up on these changes. During one of our physical therapy sessions, she looked at me and said, There's something different about you, Samuel. Your eyes, they look deeper, more at peace. I couldn't help but smile, a wave of love washing over me. I've seen things, Lily, I whispered, my voice soft, things that have altered everything. Gradually, I began to unearth my experiences and share them with Lily and others. At first, it was tough to articulate. How does one explain colors that don't exist in this world? How do we even begin to describe a love so immense and unconditional that it makes our usual ideas of love appear like mere echoes? As I reflected on this, I realized it wasn't only about the words themselves. It was the underlying energy, the love and compassion I felt coursing through me. 
Everything changed for me after that experience. My perspective on life flipped upside down. What once seemed vital, like status or material wealth, lost its meaning. Instead, I began to cherish the truly important things, love, connection, and understanding. At the office, my coworkers picked up on this shift in my demeanor. Where I had previously been critical of young offenders, I found myself approaching them with kindness and a deeper sense of empathy. I could now see the light within each individual, looking beyond their errors and shortcomings. My views on faith evolved too. I still went to church, but not out of fear or obligation anymore. For me, it became a space for community, a chance to share the incredible love I experienced in that extraordinary moment. Although reconciling some church teachings with my personal experiences was challenging, I focused on the core messages of love and compassion that resonated more than ever. I started meditating regularly to reconnect with that profound sense of unity. Sometimes in those peaceful moments, I could feel Jesus' presence beside me, his love wrapping around me like a soothing embrace. As time went by, I came to realize I was living out the mission meant for me, not through loud proclamations or dramatic gestures, but through everyday kindness. A warm smile for a stranger, an encouraging word for someone struggling, or a gentle hug for Lily were all simple ways to bring a taste of heaven into the everyday world. Even with these positive changes, there were still tough days. Some moments felt heavy, and I longed for that perfect peace I'd once known. Yet, I held on to the comfort of Jesus' words, you will never truly be separated from this place or me. So I kept moving forward, day by day. I was transformed by that experience, carrying a piece of heaven within me, sharing it through love and compassion, and living with the profound awareness that we are all connected. You know, life is often a part of something grander and more magnificent than we can possibly grasp. For some, my journey might sound unbelievable, while others may find it a bit far-fetched. But let me tell you, it's the most profound truth I've ever come across. Throughout all of this, one significant lesson has emerged. Love, pure, unconditional, and universal, is an incredible force that binds us together. It uplifts us, nurtures our spirits, and ultimately guides us back to where we belong. Now, as I wrap up my story, I wanna clarify that I don't have all the answers. Rather, I've caught a glimpse of something greater than our earthly perceptions. My sincere hope is that by sharing this experience, I can encourage others to embrace love, compassion, and a deeper awareness of our shared existence. Ultimately, our time here on Earth boils down to mastering the art of love, loving without conditions, just as we are loved by something divine. If this heartfelt spiritual account resonated with you, it would mean a lot if you could drop a like Share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can catch every new video and help us spread this inspiring message to more people. Until next time.